every week that we're at church, we talk about God's big story. There are so many true stories in the Bible, and they all point to one big story. God's plan to save people from their sins. It's all about Jesus. The last time we were together at church, um, we talked about Jacob's favorite son, Joseph, and how he gave him a beautiful coat. Um, we talked about how Joseph's jealous brothers sold him into slavery, and he was taken to Egypt. Prior to Easter, we watched videos about Joseph's life in Egypt, the years of famine, and how God used him there. And we know that this is how the Israelite people started living in Egypt. So we are going to go back several hundred years before Jesus' life, about 1,500 years actually, and we're going to see how this true story from the Bible ties into what we've been talking about during Easter. Uh, the story today is found in the second book of the Bible, Exodus. It's in the Old Testament. And we're looking at chapters 5 through 12. We're not going to read all of chapters 5 through 12. Um, so if you want more detail, you can read all eight chapters. It is very interesting to read through, that is for sure. We do have a big picture question. Um, just like our big picture question during Easter time was, who saves us from our sins? Jesus saves us from our sins. Today, our big picture question is, is there anything God cannot do? Is there anything God cannot do? And our answer is, God can do all things according to his character. God's people, do you remember what God's people were called? Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? And God changed Jacob's name. He gave a promise to Abraham and then passed that promise on down. And he changed Jacob's name to Israel. And so the God's people are called the Israelites. So God's people, Joseph's whole family, all his brothers and his dad who had passed away, but um, they are all lived in Egypt for a long time. They became slaves in Egypt and the number of people grew to where at this point in time, or we're going to talk about today, there were about 600,000 men. So they all also had, um, you know, they would have wives, families. So we're talking a lot of people. Well, God's people, the Israelites, they were slaves in Egypt. And God had a plan to rescue the people of Egypt or the people of Israel from their slavery in Egypt. And the Israelites called out to God to rescue them. And God called Moses. God was going to use Moses to rescue them. Moses and Aaron, Aaron is Moses' brother. God let him be involved too. Um, they faced a huge obstacle in leading the Israelites out of Egypt. And his name was, some of you know the story, his name was Pharaoh. Moses and his brother went to Pharaoh, and Moses was very nervous. And he said to Pharaoh, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Let my people go. Well, Pharaoh, he, he didn't recognize the Lord's authority. The God of Israel, what does that mean to him? He, he did not respect the God of Israel, and so he responded, who is the Lord? Why should I obey him? Israel may not go. Pharaoh had a hard heart, a hard heart, but it all fit into God's plan to reveal to Pharaoh and all of Egypt who God is. First, God sent a series of plagues that wrecked Egypt. The plagues were acts of judgment, and they were designed to show the Egyptians who God is. So plagues, what are plagues? Well, a plague is um, a bad thing that happens to a whole land or country. Um, all over the place. And so God sent 10 plagues. Now let's remember our big picture question because we're going to see it throughout the plagues. Is there anything God cannot do? 
you remember the answer? Is there anything God cannot do? God can do all things according to his character. So here, God sent 10 plagues to punish the Egyptians. When Pharaoh said no about letting the people go, God sent the first plague, which was um, the River Nile that went through Egypt. He turned it to blood. Um, all the fish died and the river smelled awful. Every, you, you've smelled dead fish before, right? Everybody hold your nose. Ooh, yeah, it really stunk. It really, it was terrible. I'm sure it was. Pharaoh still wouldn't let the Israelites go. So God sent a plague of frogs. There were frogs everywhere in the streets, in the houses. People are pushing them off of themselves. There are frogs everywhere. They're in their beds. Oh my goodness. Um, if you want to, you can crouch down and act like a frog. Ribbit, ribbit. Pharaoh still said no. So when then God sent a, pla a plague of gnats. Now gnats are those tiny little bugs. You can barely see them. And they just, they get, when you go for a bike ride in the summertime, they can get in your eyes or go up your nose. Or if you yawn, they're in your mouth. They're just tiny little things. They're all everywhere. And the sand, even the all the sand in Egypt, turned into, all the dust turned into gnats. So you can pretend to be gnats. Ugh. Still Pharaoh said no. So God sent a plague of flies on the Egyptians, but they didn't touch God's people, the Israelites. A thick swarm of flies filled Pharaoh's palace and the house of the officials. Let's hear some buzzing flies. Yeah, you have some wings. I know some of you are a little bit big, but you can do it. <laughs> um, so I know I would be getting out my fly swatter for sure and swatting at all those flies. So many flies, but Pharaoh still, he still said no. So God sent a plague against the livestock of the Egyptians. So the livestock is like the farm animals. All the Egyptians, horses, donkeys, camels, Cattle, sheep, goats, they died. But none of the Israelites' animals died. God was trying to show that he is God. God was showing, but it, Pharaoh's heart was still hard. He would not yet let them go. So God was not finished. He had a plan. God sent a plague of boils on the Egyptian. Now, you might not be quite sure what a boil is, but it's like a nasty blister or sore. And Pharaoh and the Egyptians and their animals, whatever animals that they had left that weren't the livestock, all broke out in these festering boils. Just pretend like you're scratching like a million mosquito bites. I mean, just all over. They had these sores. But Pharaoh still said no. His heart was hard. So God sent another plague, and this time it was hail. Has anyone ever been in a storm that had hail? It is pretty scary. It is pretty scary, and it can ruin crops, too. So you think about it, their fish are dead. Their water is blood. Their um, livestock are dead. Now some of their crops are getting destroyed by hail. And now on this next plague, their crops are even more destroyed because God sent a plague of locusts. Locusts are like grasshoppers and they eat plants. And so God sent them and they, there were so many of them that you could not even see the ground. They covered the ground and the locusts ate whatever crops had not yet been destroyed by the hail and they even ate the trees. Then the locusts swarmed inside the houses and Pharaoh's palace. Um, if you want, you can munch, 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 pretend like you're a locust and munch everything. That's probably how you feel like we're cooped up in our house. You just want to eat everything, right? But you're not going to eat the trees. You're just going to go for all the snack foods. I know I bought Pop-Tarts a few times and my kids were pretty excited because I never buy Pop-Tarts. But anyways, I'm getting distracted talking about munching on things. Well, Pharaoh still said no. So God sent a plague of darkness. For three days, darkness covered Egypt. It was so dark that the Egyptians could not even see each other. But there was light, as usual, where the Israelites lived. Now it's 
hard to imagine how that's even possible, how God could have done this. But what is our big picture question and answer? Is there anything God cannot do? God can do all things according to his character. So it was dark where all the Egyptians were, but yet it was light where the Israelites were. Pharaoh, he was still determined to say no. God knew this next plague would be so bad that it would force Pharaoh to let the Israelites go. In fact, Pharaoh would order them to leave. So most of this plague happened at night. So I'm going to speak very quietly. God said each Israelite should kill a perfect lamb and roast the meat. Then they should use the blood from the lamb to paint on their door frames. The blood painted above their door frames would show that they were God's people. At midnight, so the, so the Israelites did this, and at midnight an angel of the Lord would pass through Egypt, killing all of the firstborn sons. Have you ever heard the word Passover at church? Mrs. Ghani and I both mentioned it um, last week during our Easter lessons. So listen closely here because you'll understand a little bit more about Passover, where that came from. The Israelites would always celebrate God's protection on them on this night, the night of this last plague. The angel of the Lord would pass over the houses that had blood painted on the door frames. No one inside those houses would be harmed. The angels would see the blood on the door frames, and they would know that God's people lived in those houses. They would be spared. That night, after, the, after their meal, it was dark in Egypt. It was late. I would guess that none of the Israelites' parents slept that night, knowing that the angel of death was coming. Can you imagine what it must have been like knowing what was about to happen? That night probably seemed to last forever. Let's sit quietly, silently, and just wait, just as God's people did that night. The people waited in silence probably seemed like forever and then it was midnight the time God said for a little while they heard nothing then in the distance they heard the sad cries of parents soon it seemed like all of Egypt was filled with sadness and anger but in the houses of God's people it was peaceful and quiet it was just as God had promised. The angel had passed over the Israelite houses. Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron. Go, he said. The Israelites were ready. 600,000 men and their families, and they left Egypt quickly. They took their bread and their animals, and they asked the Egyptians for gold and silver and clothing, and they said, take whatever you want, just leave. God led his people out of Egypt. He was preparing a place for them in a land called Canaan. For 430 years, the Israelites had been slaves in the land of Egypt. They were finally free. It's not hard to see how this narrative from the Bible, this true story, points to Jesus. How it is a part of God's big story of redemption. It's not hard to see how it ties in. The Israelite people, they were sinful. They deserved death just as much as the Egypt, Egyptians did. They weren't perfect. Um, but God, he graciously provided a way out. By his grace, God spared the Israelites from judgment by requiring the blood of a lamb on their doorpost. Jesus is the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the whole world, not just the Israelites, takes away the sin of the world, his death, 
was the ultimate sacrifice. And those who trust in Christ are under his saving blood and will be passed over in the final judgment. There are so many great things to talk about after a lesson like this. I know your teachers wish they could talk with you. Um, I know you would all have so many great questions. Um, and the plagues, just to think about them is mind-blowing. It's hard to imagine what it would have been like. But here are some things you might talk about with your parents, some questions you might ponder, or maybe you just think, about, think of them in your own mind or write about some ideas you might have. Um, what does this story teach you about God or about the gospel? What does this story teach you about yourself? Um, why do you think Pharaoh refused to let the Israelites go? Um, what are some ways God used the Israelites' time in Egypt for his glory and for the good of the Israelites? Hmm. Some pretty great questions to discuss. I know if those fourth and fifth graders could meet with Miss Tracy, she'd love to talk about that kind of stuff. Um, I hope you have some good discussions at home about it and it draws you closer to the Lord. And I know as I study... Um, just the way the whole Old Testament points to Jesus. It just makes my um, my picture of God so much bigger. God is so big and he is so good. Um, would you pray with me? Dear Lord, uh, we just praise you for your goodness. We are so thankful um, for Jesus' sacrifice, the Lamb of God on our behalf, Lord. And we just so praise you for that. Um, I just pray that you'll bless these families in the coming weeks as they are um, filling their day, looking for ways to fill their days and um, spending more time together, Lord, that it would be a uh, blessed time, that it would be a time of growing together as a family and growing closer to you. And we just thank you, God, that you are such a big God to be praised. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.